people of black people we are the entitled largely uneducated flamboyantly problematic group that offers that everyone else is the problem but us we think that we should be the leaders of the black community without actually taking responsibility for negative things that happen within the black community we offer that it is everyone else's fault that things don't work but our it's society not respecting the black man it's the black woman not respecting the black man it's the feminization of the black man it's the masculinization of the black woman it is the black woman choosing the wrong black man it's the lb lgbtq plus community trying to indoctrinate the black man everybody else's fault but ours and if anyone steps outside the pocket to remind us in any way shape or form that we might be able to do better than they're bashing black men. And don't get me wrong, things are hard for us as black men, but that doesn't give us the right to pretend like things aren't hard for other people. Like we don't make things hard for other people. That's what white people do. Hello, 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 guys. It is Lexus Exodus. So this is my daily series called The Blackistan Zoo, where we profile the animals, monsters, derelicts, and other creatures often found in Blackistan. Uh, and like always, this premieres daily weekdays, Monday through Friday at 6.30 t <laughs> So let's get to it. Um, today, we are going to profile the Naker Leech. Um, and so we're going to uh, talk through a few stories. So shout out to my loyal subscriber, Sydney Lee, who shared, or Sydney Lee Angel, who shared this tip. Um, there has been another stimulus freak assault attack on a black woman. Uh, so shout out to you for, for sending that to me. Uh, if you guys have tips or story ideas for content, feel free to send them to me as well. My email is LexisExodusChannel at gmail.com. So before we get into these stories, let's briefly go through the profile of your typical leech in Blackistan. Um, so the, these animals are segmented parasitic. Um, they're predatory worms. Um, they like to, to leech and uh, to blood suck and they live off of, off of hosts, off of unsuspecting hosts. Their habitat, so they are found wherever they can reside rent free. So I'm talking about couch surfing if they need to. Uh, they may live in a hotel. Uh, they may live with their mother, grandmother. Um, also, it, it's important to note that leeches are homosexual, meaning that they will literally date uh, someone and have children with someone if they have housing. Um, yeah, and these, these animals are characterized by being extremely exploitative extremely explo exploitative. They're opportunistic. Um, and every time they meet um, a woman or meet anyone really, they're just thinking, um, how much can I squeeze from this person? And um, how much can I get for doing uh, uh, the most minimal? Um, so they're very conniving, very sneaky. Um, like I briefly talked about their mating habits. So they like to date uh, mules or mammies as mates. Um, and that's because they like to choose women who will be vulnerable and who will be empathetic and who will um, give in to their demands. So they selectively choose uh, these women with resources. So um, oftentimes they'll choose women who work quite a bit. So, you know, they'll talk about 50-50, even though uh, they just want you to take care of them and frequently they're unemployed. Um, so they'll date mules, uh, women who don't mind breaking their back, working multiple jobs, uh, working overnight shifts to, to provide for a household that they, they can't uh, afford to provide for. 
They'll also target mates with um, government assistance. So you'll see them with women with uh, Section 8 vouchers, uh, with free rent, free housing, with food stamps, things like that. Uh, so yeah, they'll target women who receive government assistance with children. So really anyone who has more resources than them so they can suck them dry and then uh, move on to their next victim. Um, so and we'll, we'll briefly talk about some notable leeches, some, um, some in the media that are well known. Um, you think of Mary J. Blige's ex can do. Um, you know, a, a man who has no career literally um, sustained his lifestyle off of her her being famous and her her celebrity status and her money. Um, and then now to this day, this woman has no children with this man, but she's uh, paying spouse support and alimony. Um, I didn't think about this before when I was prepping for this video, but Wendy Williams is is a prime example. Her ex, I forget his name, is is a leech. Um, he's a naker leech, and um, again, just opportunistic. Um, you know, utilize Wendy for her money, her resources, her celebrity status. Um, you know, there were stories that came out that he was even using her money to fund his mistress's lifestyle. So disgusting, blood sucking, um, just will we'll bleed you dry and we'll take your resources and we'll try to take anything that they can from you. Um, Sherry Shepard, her ex is another example of a Nick Relish. Um, he convinced her to, to get a surrogate and to have children. Um, now it didn't work out and she's paying child support. So for a child that's not even biologically hers. And these are these are the minor cases. Like I know it seems like a big deal, but um, if you survive these relationships and are able to exit them just by losing a little bit of money or paying alimony, you're lucky. I mean, thank your lucky stars. Uh, because in severe cases like the one we're going to talk about today, these these animals will leech, um, still kill and destroy mates, oftentimes to obtain what they want. Um, and I mean, we talked about the, about the man who just killed a family of four just for a stimulus check, just for a $1,400 check. Um, this is another extreme circumstance where where a leech, a nigger leech, um, attacked a woman and her family for, for her stimulus. So let's get into this new story and then we will unpack. The man is behind bars tonight, charged with arson and attempted murder. Deputies say it was all over a stimulus check. Our Scotty Kay has the story. Ray Bradford Jr. is being held here at the Spartanburg County Detention Center after Sheriff Chuck Wright says he was the suspect in one of the worst domestic violence cases the sheriff says he's ever seen. This guy right here. He just goes up to the Hopefully you guys can hear that. You just never know. Ray Bradford Jr. is accused of slamming <laughs> that, his girlfriend to the ground, kicking her, stomping on her neck, and threatening to end her life. I saw the pictures, and this poor lady was, was beaten pretty badly. She got struck with a lamp and a table leg and the guy's fist. Sheriff Chuck Wright says the victim suffered a broken nose and a broken jaw. I've been doing this 35 years. I haven't seen many people beat this bad. After the assault, investigators say Bradford set the house and the victim's car on fire, but they say he Lord didn't stop Jesus. there. While we were working that scene, the suspect, Mr. Ray Bradford Jr., uh, made his way over to his girlfriend's mother's house uh, and burnt her car. Shortly after, deputies found Bradford walking along Chesney Highway near Maple Tree Lane. They had gasoline in each hand. They had gasoline in a liquor bottle, I think a water bottle. He, turned, he opens up a gasoline and threatens to burn the officers and, and himself. With the help of a canine, Jesus. the officers were able to arrest him without incident. Investigators Dang, the poor dog had to get involved. involved. The government holding his stimulus check due to unpaid child support. Sheriff Wright said had officers not arrested Bradford <laughs> when they did, the oh, outcome Jesus. could have been so much worse. Yeah, he told him. He said, if y'all hadn't caught me, I was going to go back and take care of his girlfriend and, and their children. Yeah, Bradford had a bond hearing yesterday and was denied bond on all of his charges. According to a background check, he has an extensive criminal history, including criminal domestic violence and assault. In of course County, he does. Scotty K, 7 News. 
The victim in the case was taken to Spartanburg <sighs> Regional and is recovering from her injuries. Okay. Oh my gosh, and I'm I'm not laughing at the severity of this story. Please, I don't mean uh, to be sound dismissive. I am laughing at how um, how abnormal and how extreme and how bizarre this story is. This man, this grown ass man, the he done kicked, struck this lady on the neck, gave her a broken jaw and nose. They said he hit her with a lamp and a table leg. All of this over a $1,400 fucking check. All of this over a $1,400 check, y'all. We talking about, and where, where I'm from, I won't tell y'all where I'm from, but I live in a place where the cost of living isn't very high. It's not, I mean, it's normal. It's not like Cali or nothing or New York. Um, but but $1,400, that's like, that's one month's rent. You can't do nothing with no $1,400. Oh, he didn't set the house on fire. He he went to um the victim's mom's house, set her car on fire. And in all my 35 years of life, I've never seen anything like that. Never. This shit is crazy. But this is what I mean. The the Blackistan is is inundated with an influx of these leeches, of these monsters, who instead of working, shit, you hell, you could have went to the temp service down the street and got a job and made $1,400 real easily within a few weeks. But instead of doing that, instead of working like most normal contributing citizens in society, this motherfucker kills, try, attempts to kill this woman, sets the fucking house on fire. For a thousand dollars. And did y'all catch that? I didn't catch that until um right now. They he didn't get his stimulus check due to old child support. <laughs> Law Jesus. You can't make this shit up. You cannot make this shit up. This is why I be like, Tyler Perry is on to something. Y'all like to poke fun at that man and talk about how, you know, uh, the men in his movies are the most extreme circumstances. He makes the most bizarre scenarios. But this shit really happens. All he got to do is is, is rip the, the stories, uh, the news headlines for his movies. That's it. God damn. Like, I just can't understand this. I, I cannot understand it. What, what, how, how fucked up and remedial is, is your logic, is your baseline that instead of getting a job, hell, work at McDonald's, you can make $1,400. <laughs> instead of just working a job, flipping hamburgers or something, uh, fucking, I don't know retail being a walmart greeter hell sell drugs if you got to sell i would respect that more instead of instead of doing that that's the easy path this motherfucker wants to kill an entire family they said that if he hadn't been caught he was gonna go back to kill the kids I and I don't know, like, and I, this is why I don't, I don't waste my time. Two, two people I will not argue with is Nakers, and I won't argue with Mammies because you're not going to convince them. You, you would think a story like this, and you know, there's been an influx of these stories because we just talked about about the leech who killed um, his family of four over stimulus. But you would think stories like this would be enough to convince these women that they're in danger. If that don't convince you, I'm done. I'm done. It's like, you know, smart people, wise people learn from other, other people's mistakes. No, but y'all motherfuckers got to live this shit in order for y'all to learn y'all's lessons. And it's crazy because when you think about it, a stimulus check is already only for those who don't make much money. So it's for people who make less than 80000 a year, I believe. 
So this fool ain't upset and ain't angry about the fact that, you know, his family and his baby mama have so little money that they qualify for the damn stimulus. He's upset because he's not personally benefiting from it. <laughs> y'all, beware of these leeches. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all, they will steal, kill, and destroy to get your resources. Instead of working for it on their own, like most men, they will victimize innocent women and children to get it. Um, and these, these are the same men who are upset about the Goldman Sachs um, initiative to donate uh, $10 billion to Black women um, over the next few years. You know, they want to complain. They want to complain about the man, about the man, about Brad pushing black men out the home um, because, he, you know, he's doing his job and he's he's providing and he's the one who has um, developed all these social programs like Section 8 and food stamps to take care of these women that they abandon and these children that they abandon. But the truth is they need to be personally thanking the man for handling these responsibilities that you neglected. Especially because all y'all leeches, all y'all did was end up shacking up with these women receiving these benefits anyway. Um, and when I was prepping for this story, I thought about how growing up, um, I really thought that my mother's living boyfriend took care of everything. I thought that he took care of the bills that, that, that we had. And we were poor. We were we were poor, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna lie, but I, you know, my mom didn't work. So I thought that, oh, okay, he's the one who's handling rent and who's handling um, utilities. And um, he's the one who who's the primary breadwinner. It, it took me um, until I was 19, 20 for me to have the realization that his little janitor job that he had, all he, all this man did was move in with my mom who was already living rent free because she was getting section eight. And so all he did with his little pennies was pay the little uh, light utility uh, bill or maybe like a water bill, which you know, that's even um, subsidized too. Because when you receive those benefits, uh, usually they're taking care of other things as well. So like, dude, for real. Um, and I was personally a victim of one of these leeches, and that's why I'm so like passionate about this. Not this extreme, thank God, but yeah. I, and I think most most uh, mammies and mules have horror stories like this. Um, but I wish my my father warned me. But y'all know that there's no guidance, no wisdom within the community. Um, you know, all I was told by my father in Black Asian was to be independent. So, you know, ever since I was a young girl, I was indoctrinated to be a mule. Nothing else. He didn't tell me anything, anything. Um, nothing about hy hypergamy, nothing about, um, you know, beware of dating a man who can't bring anything to the table, nothing. I had to learn it all on my own. So that, that's why I have this channel to teach you guys the things that I didn't know. That way you can avoid my mistakes. Because if I knew this back in my early 20s, y'all, and I'm good now. But I'm telling y'all, if I had these gems back then, man, I would have avoided a lot of headache. Um, so, and I, my leech, I met him at 16, so I really didn't know better. Um, and I was always driven. I was always driven as a young girl. Um, I, in high school, I took advantage of this college program that they had where you could attend uh college courses. You could take college courses at the local community college for free um, as long as you were able to pass this, this exam. So I was a 4.0 college student maintaining a 4.0 at the age of 17 while still in high school, while also working part-time, working a part-time job. And I interned and I volunteered and I got all these like awards and stuff for community service. And I got tons of scholarships. I got half a million dollars in scholarships because I was very, very focused and very driven. And I continued down that path um, after high school. Um, and I didn't know any any better. I didn't know to, you know, date like-minded people or date someone on the same path. I, you know, I thought, okay, well, we both were teenagers. So neither of us really had nothing. Um, so after high school, I moved in with my ex um, and he was jobless and I paid bills thinking, oh, okay, you know, it's fine. You know, I, I'm going to be ride or die. He, he going to get a job soon. Like thinking I'm just being loyal. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do by working while this motherfucker sat on his ass 
And this this motherfucker didn't have no car. Used to use my car to see other bitches while I was at work. But this is your classic textbook leech. They're ho- homosexual. Um, and I real I really think that this fool got me pregnant on purpose. Um, and I, I I think about it now that I'm older and I've been far removed from that situation for a long time. Um, I really do think that it was to utilize my intellect and to uh, come up off my resources forever. Um, You know, I'm professional. I'm professional. I have a BA and an MS and um, I work. I have a very lucrative career in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, And I was I was vulnerable with a really good heart and was naive. So I was a prime target for these leeches. Mammies are prime targets, mammies and mules. Um, And that mine was a minor case in comparison to this. So, and like I said, if you've had a similar experience like I did, thank you, lucky stars. If you exited that unscathed, um, if if you still have your life, because if you're lucky, that's all they'll try to take is your resources. But in in really extreme cases, these leeches will try to take your life. Lord Jesus. Here's another um, textbook example of a leech who further explains their homosexual mentality, their homosexual um, mating activity. Let's see if I can find it. See, and this I is on really um, can help. this sentence. It- Tanya TK. Oh, she and I love her. She is a content creator that I really enjoy. And I couldn't find um, the video clip of just this man speaking. I could only find it um, within her video. So we're just going to watch that clip. It's grammatically correct. But basically what you do is you go over the girl house. Oh, and I should preface this. This is this is a leech explaining how to finesse a woman and move into her home. Yeah. This grown ass, big ass fucking man. You know what I'm saying? This is the first time she let you come to You know what I'm saying? You gotta hit her at her house the first time. It's the only way the plan's gonna work. So you get her to let you come over there and hit her at her crib. You dog it down. You feel me? Beat the doonies all the way down. You feel me? And then yeah, it's disgusting. fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta make sure it's on a day that you know she gotta go to work in the morning. You feel me? So you come over there, kill it, fall asleep. If she wake up in the morning and just go to work and don't wake you up and tell you to leave or nothing like that, then just don't never leave. Just post up, you know what I'm saying? When she come back, be there. You know what I'm saying? Dishes washed. You feel me? Like, you gonna cook some little burgers, some little dilly burgers. You find some little hamburger meat in the freezer and make some little dilly hamburgers and fries when she got off work. Like, blunt roll. Are you in there? If she let you stay that night and you hit her again that night and then she's like, I'm gonna work again, you live there. You feel me? Go get some clothes, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Just leave the door unlocked. Go grab you some plug. Leave the door unlocked so you can get back in. You don't never want to not be there. You don't never want her to be able to get in the crib while you ain't there until you all the way locked in. You know what I'm saying? So, man, that's the move, man. Just go over there and kill it one time and uh, post up. No, my lord. You know what? Listen, so I guess this is embarrassing. And this man is comfortable. This this is how comfortable they are in their bullshit and in, in, in their failures. There's no shame. There's no shame. You think he'd be embarrassed. You think he'd be embarrassed by the fact that he cannot, as a grown ass, he look, he look about my age, as a grown ass motherfucking 30, 40 year old man. Instead of being able to take care of yourself and instead of being able to provide for yourself, you are targeting women and sleeping with women to have a place to lay your head. There's no shame though. He's not in, he's not embarrassed by that shit. Cause the bar is in hell in Black Pistan. He, he he's proud of it. He's sitting here boasting, telling other men how to do that shit. Talking about leave the door or not. And now that I think about it, I remember when I was in my BS uh with my necker, I remember he secretly uh made a copy of my key. 
Mm-hmm. This, I'm telling y'all, beware. Be vigilant. Because these, they're, especially around tax time, if you, if you all of a sudden start getting, you know, nice texts of, you know, your children's father trying to butter you up or, you know, random men um, reaching out to you around January, February, March, they know it's tax season. They know you about to come up. They know y'all getting, getting $3,000, three stacks for each kid. So I'm telling y'all, be careful. <laughs> Because these men will use you, often abuse you, <laughs> to have access to your money and your resources. I'm done. This video to piss me off. All right. I'm done. Until next time, I will talk to you guys tomorrow, same time, same day. Love you guys. See ya. <laughs>